Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful landing page. In fact, let me show you what it looks like. So yesterday I was uh, doing some uh, a video on uh, great UI design and I came across this Canon website where they're talking about the new EOS R5. So I looked at this and I was like, wow, I'm pretty sure I can redesign this in, um, in Divi and using Photoshop as well. So that is my challenge today. And let me show you the final result. So this is our final result. So this is what I did. I downloaded the image, added it in there, added some, some features, and this is finally what I came up with. And I'm pretty sure you guys can agree with me that uh, it looks, the style here looks, looks very similar. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do step-by-step -step in today's tutorial. Now, before we begin, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you access to my web design formula. This is a course that teaches you how to design professional looking websites with Divi. And also, if you um, purchase my Genesis templates, it's only $9. It gives you a beautiful header, a footer, 404 page and search results page. This will definitely help you speed up your web design process rather than spend too much time redesigning your headers, footers each and every time. This template, cuts that time by just installing it. And just in a few seconds, you'll have headers, footers, 404 pages, and search results pages. All right, guys, let's get started. Let me show you how to create this design. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by heading over here to pexels.com. So all I've done here is I've searched for camera, and you can see here there's quite a lot of cameras. So the image I'm looking for is something which has a white background, something like that. In fact, this is the image that we used. So this one works really well because we can um, create a transparent background and isolate the camera. So that's what we need to do first. So as you're going through this, if you want to make a product website or you want to highlight a product on your designs, make sure that you have a white background or basically a background which is plain because it makes it easier for you to go in and um, you know change the colors and so on. All right, so I've gone ahead and downloaded this image already. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head over to my site, go to, in fact, before we go to the site, we need to go into Photoshop. So let me show you how to work on this image here in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna make this nice and big so we can all see what I'm doing. There we go. Right, so let's start with a brand new document. So I'm gonna click here on new and making sure your background contents here is set to transparent. Let's go with 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna click on create and then I'm just gonna find my image and drag it into, into the canvas. So I know it's in my downloads folder. So I just need to look for that. And here it is. Okay, so here's my image. So I'm just gonna, I just need to resize this and make it nice and big because this is going to be the focus of our design. Okay, so I think that's big enough and I just need to center it. So once you have it in there, just press enter. Next, I'm gonna add a new layer and then just drag it onto the bottom here. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to isolate this image here from the background. So to do that, you wanna come over here and click on Quick Selection Tool. So once you click on this, it's going to show you these options here on the top. So if I click on Select Subject, it's just gonna highlight my subject for me. Next, I'm gonna click Select and Mask. And now I've removed this camera from the background. So I can uh, take a look here at different ways of looking at it. So I can have it in a gray background if I want to. And this is what it looks like without the white background. Okay, so pretty much this selection is great. And by the way, if you want to learn how to use Photoshop, I have a Photoshop for Web Designers course. The link to that is in the video description below. But if you're a VIP member, you get this course absolutely free. And also, if you wanna learn how to design websites using Divi, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, you'll get access to my web design formula course. And also, if you're a VIP member as well, I mean, you get that course absolutely free and any new courses that I am working on. All right, so let's continue with this. 
So now that I have this, I'm pretty much happy with that. I'm gonna go all the way down here to the bottom and output to, let's say output to new layer. Click okay. And now I have my camera on a new layer. So this is the old one. So this is my new layer. So all we have to do now is, in fact, let me just show you something very quickly here. So if, if I add a background to this, oops, if I add a background now, it's uh, very easy for me to, to have any color background here on my product. And I'm sure you've seen some websites that have a bright color and, and the subject is really like right there in the middle. But of course, this is not what we're going at. So let's add a back, black background like that because that is similar to what we have on the website. Okay, so now that we have this black background, let's export this. So I'm going to export this and we are going to export it as a JPEG. It doesn't have to be a PNG. And the reason why we're doing that is because if you take a look here at the size of the image, it's 1.2 megs. So if I go to JPEG, you can see here it's gone really down. So this helps your website um, load images faster. All right, so I'm gonna save this and let's just call this camera. So I'm gonna save this to, let's save it to the desktop so it's easier to find. And now we don't need Photoshop, I'm just gonna minimize that. Now back over here on our website, what we're gonna do is to create a new page. So I'm gonna click on add new and let's just call this page camera or whatever it is that you wanna call it. So I'm gonna call this camera, use the DV Builder. So what I'm gonna do here is um, build this all the way from scratch. So I'm gonna click here on build from scratch. And my column structure here is going to be two thirds or one third, or maybe even, um, yeah, two thirds, one third would work, but I can even stretch it three thirds to one quarter. So that, I mean, three quarters to one quarter. So that could work as well. Let's see how we, how we get on with that. All right, so I'm gonna close this for now. And then the next stage is to go into my row settings design, sizing. So I wanna reduce the space between the columns here to one. So I don't want anything, uh, any lines between my columns or any spaces. Equalize column right, uh, height is fine. I'm gonna go back in and adjust my width at a later stage. So I'm gonna leave this as it is for now. So the next stage now is to add my background, but it's going to go in the first column. So I'm gonna come over here to my first column, click on background, and then I'm gonna add my image. So let's upload our image, it's on the desktop. So I'm gonna come over here to my desktop and there we go. That's the image that I've just created in Photoshop. I'm gonna click upload an image. So now we can see the image right there in the background. Okay, great. The next stage now is to come over here on the gradient. And I know we can't really see much here. So let's just add our gradient for now. And uh, it's gonna have black here as our first color. Drag it all the way down here to black. And my second color is going to be transparent. So it's gonna be black to transparent. And now I'm gonna change my direction to 90 degrees. And let's leave this as it is for now. So I'm gonna save, save one more time. And then over here, let's take a look at our Canon website. So we need to have a header description and then a call to action. So we can get away with the blurb here. So let's search for our blurb for this. There we go. So now our camera is uh, showing because we have more information here. So that's great. So over here on image and icon, I'm just gonna delete this because we don't really need that image. And then back over here, let's see, let's, we need a title and a description. So let's go in and add our title. So let's say the new Fuji XT10, I think. XT10. Okay, so that's going to be our title. And for our description here, I'm just going to have a bit of text. Not too much. 
So we're gonna use that as our dummy text. I'm gonna save that. And then next we're also going to need a button. Select that. So now we need to customize this button. So let's call this find out more or more info. Right, so what you need to do right away is to uh, include your link over here. I'm gonna add a blank link, but in your case, you want to add a link that goes to whatever page it is that has more information about this camera. All right, so I'm gonna save for now, and then I'm gonna go in and make further adjustments over here. So let's start with the uh, main section here. So the very first thing I need to do is to get rid of the padding, both on the top and the bottom. And I also don't need any margins to the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna save that. Now I'm gonna go into my row settings. So in my row settings, I need to go to sizing and drag this all the way up to 100%. So I want this to be edge to edge. And I'm also going to do the same here with, um, with the maximum width, set this to 100%. So now everything is edge to edge. So that's looking great. I'm gonna come back over here and go to the second column. So as you can see here on the second column, things are really tight. So everything is all the way to the edge. So I wanna change that by coming over here to design spacing. And I'm gonna add a padding to the left and the right. So let's set it at 5% and see if that's gonna work. We may need to bring this down to about maybe 3%. Okay, let's go with 3%. Save that, save this one more time. All right, so let's add something in here. So we can go with uh, something as basic as a divider, but the way we're gonna use the divider is in such a way that um, we are not going to show the divider itself. So I'm gonna say no to show divider, and then over here on spacing, no, on sizing, I'm going to add my height. Okay, let's go to 498. Right, so I'm gonna save this for now. In fact, I need to make it a bit more. So I'm gonna go back in. Let's go back to our divider here. So instead of 498, let's go for 560. Now, while I'm here, I also need to take a look and see what it looks like when I, um, when I go to the different views. So in here, let's try and go for 500. And then for the phone, we're gonna go with, uh, let's go with 346, because that shows the whole camera. Okay, so now that I have my views, we also need to do a bit of work here, as you can see. So let's go back. Switch back over here to desktop and save. So on the desktop here, we can see things are looking much better. So let's go in now and uh, add our gradient. So we're gonna come over here to my first column and go to background. So the reason why my gradient here is not showing because the style we need to get is pretty much this style here where things are fading into the camera. So to achieve that, we need to, to click here on the gradient and let's place the gradient above the image. There we go. But as you can see, it's not the right direction. So let's play around with this until we have it facing the right way. So now it's facing the right direction. So. Let's adjust the start position. So I'm just gonna drag this to about, let's say 15. And now we are basically achieving this style that we have over here. Now, when we talk about the end position, we wanna make sure that our camera here is showing a lot of detail. So now you can see I'm exposing the detail here. So you just need to play around with this until you really have this the way, the way you want it. And you may also add a bit of transparency here so that it's not too dark. Okay, so let's add a bit more here as well. There we go. So I think we've pretty much achieved that. So let's save this. And let's take a quick look. 
Yep, I think that's looking great. Now, as I'm looking at this, I can see here that this probably works better if it's a two thirds and one third layout. So let's go back over here and change it. Yeah, um, I don't know, what do you guys think? No, let's leave it back the way it was. So let's leave it like that. Okay, so the next stage now is to go in and remove my padding from here. So I'm gonna go to spacing and add zero to my padding, both at the top and the bottom. So now you can see everything is all flash and it's looking great. The next area we need to focus on now is making sure things are centered here. So I'm gonna to go to my design spacing and I'm going to add a top padding. Let's start with, uh, let's say five. Let's go with 5%. Okay, let's increase this a bit more so it's a bit centered. Let's go with 10%. Okay, so now that we have this 10%, let's take a look at the different views. So let's go to our tablet. And we can see here that we have enough space, but on the bottom here, it's not looking great. So let's add 10% to the bottom here as well. Okay, so that looks much better. And if we go to the phone, let's add our 10% to the top. Okay, so I think that looks okay. And then for the sides, we're gonna add 5%, both sides. All right, so I think this looks great. So the next stage now is to go in and uh, customize all this text. So I'm gonna save this, save it one more time, and let's go into our module settings over here. So now it's time to work on the text here. So I'm gonna go to design, and I'm gonna go straight to my text, have it all caps, but we want this bold, and let's increase the size. Okay, so I think uh, we can go with, uh, let's go with 44 and let's go into our mobile views here and it looks great. Yeah, and it looks fine on three of them. All right, so moving on, let's go on to our paragraph text here. And again, we're gonna change this from light to semi bold and let's increase the size. So here on the font weight, let's change this to regular. And I'm gonna change this to pixels. Okay, so that's better. And I'm also going to, in fact, you know what? Let's align this all to the left rather than center it. So let's bring this down a bit. I think 18 is too much. So let's go with 17. And I'm also going to go back over here to my title and we're also going to set it over here to the left. So I'm happy with that. If you want, you can go in and change the color of this text, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Okay, so now it's time to save this. Next, let's now work on our button. So I'm gonna click here on my settings, design. So the very first thing I need to do here on the button is to activate use custom styles for button. And then I'm gonna add my color for my text. So my text color here is going to be white and my background color, we're gonna go with this color here, it's blue. And for us to get this, the rounded corners here like we have on this website, we need to add a border radius, but I'm gonna crank this all the way up to 100, uh, 100 pixels and uh, now, Let's go to our font size and reduce this a little bit to about say 16. And then we need to go to our font and change this to Poppins because that's the one I'm using. We're gonna change this from regular to semi bold. Okay, so that's looking okay. And we can also add an icon here if we need to. 
So that's the action that happens on hover. And now I'm going to go to spacing and add left and right padding. So on the left, I'm going to add, let's say, let's try 16, see how that works. Okay, there we go. So let's go with 30. And then I'm also going to do top and bottom. So it's going to be 16 here. That's a bit too much. Let's bring this down to about 10. So that looks better. I think I like that. Now over here, back on the button, I need to remove the border width. Okay. I think it's better like that. And over here on the border radius, I'm just going to change this to 100 VW. And then finally, as you can see here, our button is way too close to the content. So we need to go over here to spacing and add a margin of, let's say, 10, maybe even a bit more. Let's go with 18. Right. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to save that. Let's publish it for now. All right, so our design looks great now. So I'm going to save this one more time and let's exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so this is our design. We have our call to action button here. We have our camera and we have our information about the camera right here. So the next thing I need to do is just to add some dummy text here on the bottom here, just to pretty much have the same sort of effect that I have over here. So let's go ahead quickly and do that because I don't want to end here because it doesn't look right. So let's go back in. I'm going to click on edit page or edit uh, enable visual builder. So let's add a new section to this and it's going to be a regular section, single column. And then let's add another one. And this time it's going to have three. And in each one, we're going to have blurbs. Save that. Now, what we're going to do here is to do a bit of work on this blurb. So if we take a look here, we can see that we have an image and the text. So we're not going to go in and do all of that. I just want to show you quickly how you can just make your own blurbs, which similarly, which pretty much have the same sort of style here. So on here, I'm going to go into my settings. And on my image and icon, I'm going to delete this. And let's add can add an image in the background or we can add a solid color. So let's go to background and on the background, I'm just going to add my color here. Let's make sure it's black. And then on image and icon, let's use an icon instead. So these are the features of the camera. So let's add, let's add this as our main icon. And then over here on the design, I'm going to go to spacing and let's give this some padding all around. Now, the reason why I'm adding all this padding is because it just makes it easy for uh, people to read or to, uh, to see this information here on this blurb. Next, I'm going to add my colors. So as you can see, we need a color that really stands out, you know, on this dark background. So again here, I'm going to change this to white. And on my icon here, let's change the color for our icon. And I'm also going to adjust my icon size here, bring it down a bit to about, say, 44. Save. So that's going to be my first blurb. I'm going to duplicate this twice. Have it in position. And then all we have to do is to go in here and change the icon. Okay, let's go with that one. Save. Go in here, change the icon as well. Let's go with this one here, save. Now, what we could also do is we can add our call to action button in here as well. And to achieve that, we just click on this plus button. And in fact, you know what? Let's make things easier. Why don't we duplicate this button here and just drag it into position. That way, we don't have to spend a lot of time designing the button again. 
There we go. So now you may be asking, how do we then uh, have this dark background, which is also going to have the button? So to achieve that, uh, first of all, I'm just going to hold down my Alt key here, my Command key, and do a multi-select, because what I need to do is to just make sure everything is all centered here. So there we go, everything's all centered. And if I go into my button, I'm going to reduce the size because I don't want the button here too big. And I'm also going to go to my button letter spacing and just increase this a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go with two on, my, uh, on the button here. All right, so that's all we need to do here. I'm gonna save. And then what I'm gonna do next is to go into my row settings. And in my row settings, I can set my background color now to black. And now you can see it has everything all looking like one main item. So the next stage is to go in now and give this some breathing space. So I'm gonna go into design, spacing, and I'm gonna add my padding here, both to the top and the bottom. So let's start off with, let's say 20. Okay, let's get a bit more. Okay, let's go with 30 and 20 on the sides. There we go. Right, so once you have this set uh, like this, all you have to do now is to copy your styles and paste your styles onto the next one and the next one. So you can see I've saved a lot of time by just using my quick shortcuts. So if I save that, you can see now my blurbs look great. And then all I need to do now is to add my title. So let's add our text module. So what can we call this? So let's call this latest features. But we're going to set this to heading one. There we go. Next, I'm gonna go in and Go into my text here, all caps. In fact, you know what, let's not make it all caps, but we're gonna change the color. So to do that, I need to make sure I'm in my heading here and set my color. And then, I need to center this. So where's my center? Oh, there we go. So I need to center it. And pretty much that's okay. So if I save this page, I can now see that it is really taking shape. So as you can see, all these websites that you see out there, you can pretty much um, redesign them using Divi. So you don't have to go into Photoshop like what we used to do before. You can pretty much go into Divi and uh, design these websites using the Divi Builder. So this is just a quick uh, layout that I did, but the main focus was to try and achieve this design over here and how Canon has done it here on their main landing page. So that's pretty much how they did it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly how they did it, but yeah, pretty much this is, this is it. So now let's exit the Visual Builder. And yeah, this is it.